In this video, we're going to be talking about intensity and amplitude. That's why this word intensity reminded me of this uh, awesome t-shirt I once saw there. This camping is intense. Uh, uh, so we have intensity here and we have a definition for it. Well, at least not a definition, but at least how it's related to amplitude. And we have that the intensity is proportional to the amplitude squared. What does that actually mean? That means that you can say the intensity is proportional to, remember we use that sort of alpha symbol, uh, to the amplitude squared. That's the equation we can say. Uh, that is one actually on your data booklet, so there you go. What it really means, uh, if you just want to sort of break it down here, what it really means is that the intensity of a wave is going to be related to the amplitude of the wave uh, by some constant. And well, maybe you have to find that constant or something. Or maybe if you're dividing two different things, maybe that constant disappears. This idea, though, that there's some number uh, times a squared. We also have the intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Uh, and that's one we use a lot in astrophysics and also in topic 8, for example, this idea about uh, this 1 over r squared law. Um, so that has to do with it right here. It's usually because you're doing it over a uh, sphere, and the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, that's usually where it comes from. But we'll just write it down like this. So it's i is proportional to 1 over r squared. Uh, usually it's just 1 over 4 pi r squared, but you know, we, can, we can just write it like this. That's good enough. This right here is also an important one. So this is all you need really for intensity and amplitude as far as for IB questions. Um, they show up often enough actually on exams. This is still really important, this idea here, because sometimes they're really sneaky with some ratios or things. So I've got one example just to show you how to deal with a ratio here. Uh, so we have an example, at a certain distance away from a source, we have an intensity of sound heard. We're told it's 75 times 10 to the minus 4 watts per meter squared, because that's a power uh, over a surface area. Um, yeah, power over an area. And then we have a farther distance out, the intensity of the sound is now this. So it's smaller. I hope that makes sense, because uh, if you've got the sound from some place, the farther away you go, the sound should, you know, intensity should go down. It should make sense. But we want the ratio of the amplitude of each of the waves here. So the amplitude at a, uh, sorry, at one, and the amplitude at two. So can you see? We can just use this equation that we have here. This idea that, uh, and you should always show your examiner you know what you're doing. So you can say, you know, I'm going to use this fact that um, intensity is proportional to amplitude squared. You sort of show them that you know what you're doing. So let's actually start to just write out what we know. Very often when asked for a ratio like this, you just need an equation for this, an equation for this, and you're fine. Well, what you can do is you can set up one whole equation on the top, another whole equation on the bottom, and just divide the equations and lots of stuff will cancel out. In this case, I think that'll be the way to do it. So let's look at this. So we have I1, I'll fill in the numbers only later. So I have I1 over I2. Uh, let's see, well, I1 equals sort of, I could call it a K, couldn't it? Some constant times A1 squared, because isn't that the equation? I1 equals K times A1 squared. And then I could divide this whole equation by I2 equals K times A2 squared. See where it came from? It's because I1 by itself, you could say I1 equals K A1 squared. And you can say that I2 equals K A2 squared. And because of that, you can divide the two whole equations. You can say I1 over I2 is K A1 squared over K A2 squared. Because that the case cancel out, which is good, they're supposed to. And we're left with this. So keep in mind, and now I can maybe put in my numbers. If I put in the numbers, let's see, I've got 75. Now, good news is um, maybe I'll just write it all up just so you can see everything here happening. 75 times 10 to the minus 4 and 3 times 10 to the minus 4. All, right, all that equals A1 over A2. And since they're both squared, you know, I can say just whole thing squared. I can do that. Good news, because they're both times 10 to the minus 4, that cancels out. So you just got to think, what's 75 divided by 3? Well, it's just 25. So I have 25 equals a1 over a2 squared. Therefore, to get a1 over a2, what do I do? I take the square root. Technically plus or minus, but in this case, I'll just carry the, I'll just care about the positive value. So in this case here, I could say it's five. So this would be my final answer here. Okay, that the amplitude one over amplitude two is gonna be equal to five. So see how you deal with these kind of questions? You can often deal with ratio questions by just literally just write an equation on the top, the same equation on the bottom with whatever has been changed. Sometimes they'll say, like, it's been moved twice as far, or, you know, they'll change something. They'll say the amplitude has been doubled. It's fine, you put a 2 there, but 2 squared will become a 4. So you have to be, just be careful with uh, powers. But really, this is the way you do it. 